If you or someone you know has diabetes, you may have built up an extra supply of test strips and lancets. That's where we come in. We'll buy the supplies that you don't need and resell them to those in need to prevent waste. Help us make diabetes management more affordable. Visit us at teststripswithaz.com. All right, we have Drakkar Close joining us on the show. He returns to action August 17th at UFC 241 against Christos Diagos. Quite the road to get to this one, and I'm happy to be joined by Mr. Drakkar Close himself from the barbershop of all places. How are you, Drakkar? I'm doing great, man. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And first off, I wanted to, we haven't talked since this happened, but congratulations on becoming a father a little over a year ago. It truly is the best job on earth. Being a dad, I can attest to that myself, being a dad for over six years at this point. How has fatherhood been treating you? It's awesome. Uh, he actually just turned uh, one uh, last week. So, uh, but we're going to have his birthday party tomorrow for him. So uh, it's awesome, man. But, uh, I'm glad, I'm glad to be his father. How has that changed you as a, as a person, as a fighter? You know, you've always been really motivated, but I'm sure as a father looking at your son, I'm sure it has motivated you even more. How has becoming a father changed you as a professional fighter? Just knowing uh, I have to get up in the morning and, you know, go to, go to the gym and put that work in for him, you know. Uh, I, I got to make money for him, you know. He has to, he has to eat. What's, what, what movie is playing in the background here? <laughs> I was like, this must be a good movie. I don't know. They just, they just put something out. So. All right, cool. <laughs> is, it, is it too loud for you? Um, it was a little loud here in the, the 20th Century Fox thing in the background, but I think we're okay now. Um, let's talk about oh. what's going on with you in a couple of weeks, you know. You get to get back air on a huge card, and you were supposed to fight Benil Dariush on that Sacramento card, but Benil had to withdraw with an injury. How frustrating was that for you? Because you know you work so hard to get ready for this fight, you train, and then days before the fight, it's just it's just gone. It's just taken away. Ah uh, man, uh, it sucked. You know, uh, you know, so much time and so much money was put into that camp, and uh, not able to you know compete against Dariush. Now I'm not gonna lie, uh, I shed a couple of tears. You know. Uh, just out of anger, you know. Um, you know, my, I signed that contract. You know, I showed up. You know, and he didn't, and it just sucks leaving with nothing. And uh, I'm just glad uh, I can fight on this August 17th. I think, I think it was blessing to be honest. Uh, you know, I had left my my old gym. I'm at a new gym. Um, you know, it was it was an emotional roller coaster. You know, uh, all the ups and downs and. You know, it just gave me more time to be with my new coaches. Uh, and, 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 so you say it's a blessing. I know you, you were definitely not quiet about the withdrawal at all. You went on social media. Um, you thought Benil didn't really show a lot of fortitude, especially since you've been known to fight injured with broken hands a couple of different times. Now that you've had t- time to digest everything, I know you said it was it's a blessing getting this fight and being on this card, but do you still feel the same way about the situation? <laughs> You know, now it's a big card. There's gonna be my eyes watching, uh, watching me. Uh, you know, uh, I I think it's a step back, in but that's what I like about fighting. Uh, anyone can fight. You know, um, Darush gave me a better chance to get into that top 15, and um, I don't even know the guy's name. Uh, Chris, what is it, Christos or something Christos like that? Diagos, yeah. yeah. He's three and three in the UFC. Um, but I know he's going to bring it, you know what I mean? Uh, he, you know, he, he brings it in all his fights. And, um, you know, you, you never can uh, count a man out. And, uh, and we, we're going to see who the better man is uh, August 17th. After everything that happened with the Sacramento card, did it matter who it was, whether it was Christos or me or the barber that's about to cut your hair? Like, did it even matter at that point? No, nah, it didn't. Um, you know, they gave me a couple, uh, a couple options um, for the Sacramento and, uh, you know, I agreed to him, so I got happy again. Uh, and then an hour later, they called me and said uh, the guy didn't get cleared. So, you know, like I said, it was a blessing. You know, it was a lot of this. You know, they tell me I have an opponent, drops out. I have another opponent, I'm happy again. And they tell me he, he can't fight. So, you know, it, it all worked. It all worked out, man. Who did, who did they offer you, if you don't mind me asking? I know it, it, it wasn't that he was ducking you, it just he wasn't cleared. Who did they offer you? Uh, what was his name? There was, he that, uh, 
what's the Uriah's gym out there? Um, Team Alpha Male. Is that Team Alpha Male in Sacramento? Yeah, Team Alpha Male in Sacramento. Uh, it, it was a, it was a couple guys from from uh, his team. Um, he had like a knee injury or something. He didn't get cleared on that. So you know, it is what it is. You know, Christos is uh, he's won his last couple fights. He's got some definitely got some experience. I believe this is going to be his twenty fifth professional fight. He's fought a lot of names even before he got in the UFC. He fought guys like Josh Emmett. You know, long before in the regional scene. How do you like this matchup stylistically? I think it's an awesome matchup, especially uh, to get that bonus. You know, he's going to bring it. I'm going to bring it. I uh, hope he will be good. Uh, but more, uh, you know, me beat him up, not him. You know, not like me. Has your approach changed at all getting ready for this fight? I mean, you were preparing for one guy on one date, then you had to kind of put the brakes on for a few minutes, then you get right back into camp and you have to prepare to fight somebody else. Did things change at all in terms of training and preparation? Um, not really, you know, I gave myself a couple of days, uh, after that, uh, just to get my weight back up, you know, I was, uh, on that Tuesday when they told me to fight the strap, uh, I woke up at 170, and, uh, those next two days, you know, I ate as much as I can, I got back up to 185, and, uh, you know, and just, you know, cut my weight back down, and, but I'm feeling good. How do you see this all playing out in a couple of weeks? You versus Christos Yagos in Anaheim, UFC 241. Huge card, big main event. Of course, the return of Nate Diaz. I mean, this is a blockbuster card. How do you see this all going down leading into those fights? Uh, I, I see myself victorious, you know. Uh, I think I'm going to beat him in every aspect of the fight, you know. Um, you know, people say he's a, he's a great, he has great stand-up. You know, I, I fought some of the best that had good stand-up, and I thought I outstruck him. Um, they say he's a good wrestler. Well, we're going to find out about if, if he's really that good. Um, I know his cardio is not that good. You know, he he brings in the first, then he dies out. I don't die out. So I, I don't I don't think he can hang with me. I know your son's very young. He probably doesn't really understand what his dad does for a living. But is he going to be in attendance? Is he going to be coming to, to Anaheim with you guys? Oh, yeah, man. He's, uh, he's one of, like, one of my uh, main... Uh, partners in the gym you know he's always there since since uh since uh six weeks you know he's been in the gym so uh, he, but he will be out there with me uh we'll make sure he gets backstage after i get that victory so we can get that picture together is he a sponge watching you train does he try to mimic things that you're doing because i know that's probably the age when you know things start to come together you start to realize what's happening around you is he starting to to mimic what his dad does in the gym yeah, he does. Uh, he's very advanced, you know. Um, you know, I always walk around going like this to him and not <laughs> doing that. <laughs> he's hitting the bag. It's it's awesome. That's awesome. So the more the, the the older he gets, the more he's gonna be in there doing things. That must be like kind of a strange realization for you, knowing that you know a year or two from now he's gonna be running around a little bit more. He's gonna be doing a lot more and. You know, you're gonna watch him kind of evolve in the sport, much like you did back in the day. But he uh, he obviously started at a much younger age. Are you ready for that? Are you excited for that? Yeah, I'm. You know, I'm. I'm gonna show him everything, but uh, I I don't want him to fight. You know, I'm gonna make sure he hits those books. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, a lot of fighters don't have uh, plan Bs after fighting. You know, if he does choose to fight, I want him to have that plan B for when that his career does end. Well, that's a good. That's a good way to look at it. So, in terms of this fight in the aftermath, so to speak, you know, with everything that's gone down with you, the new gym, leaving the MMA lab. I know you've talked a lot about that. You mentioned it briefly here. You know, losing the fight, getting another one. In a perfect world, if all goes well, you come out of this thing relatively unscathed. Are you looking to to bounce right back and get back in there later on this year? I am. Uh, I already have a guy I want to call out. Uh, I'm just going to wait until I get that mic out there. I get that victory. Ah, oh, come on, Jakar. We're at the barber shop. This is the perfect time to reveal that kind of information. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if he has a fight lined up, but let's just say I want to fight in Madison Square, and it's an East Coast boy. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. We'll have to play a little game of guess who uh, for those watching right now. Yeah. Jakar Close yeah. joining us at the barber shop, getting ready to get a cut as he returns to action a little over two weeks at UFC 241. Always great catching up with you, Jakar. Before we let you go, let the folks know where they can find and follow you along on this journey via social media. Any shout-outs, anything else you want to get off your chest, the floor is yours, man. 
Yeah, I want to uh, give a shout out to all my teammates, my coaches at Fight Ready, uh, RX Water, um, Eight Man Strong, uh, Peter Jungle. Um, and you put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> ah, you know, I just I just want to thank everyone that just supports me, man. To be honest, <laughs> and uh, you can find you can find me at Jacard Close uh, on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Tender, not his plan. <laughs> <laughs> All the best to you, Jacob. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the time. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Okay, thank you. Thanks.